Hey guys, it's a beautiful day and we're looking at a really special bike here. This is the Igo Electric Aspire Chameleon and it is not spelled like the lizard. At first I thought, you know, what a cool name. Chameleons change colors, they blend in. This thing has this really beautiful integrated down to battery right there, uh, internally routed cables. It kind of looks like a regular bicycle, you know, at first glance. And it could look even more that way if, if it was all black. You know, obviously the battery stands out a little bit, but I like the blue. It's kind of colorful and the orange, fairly sporty. This bike, it offers a ton of options. Uh, of course, it's a road bike. It has drop bars. It gives you those three hand positions up on the flats, the hoods, and then the drops for that really forward, aggressive, aerodynamic body position. The other things it offers is front rack bosses, potentially right here, front fender bosses mounting points same thing at the rear that's for a fender same thing down there we've got rack bosses there and there and we've even got frame lock bosses for like those uh, kind of a cafe lock that puts a bar through the, the rear wheel and disables the bike very cool like most road bikes this thing does not have a kickstand and there are no provisions for that um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is it offers a lot of utility. It balances classic traditional road bike features like the, the drop bars and the really narrow tires with some utility, which to me is, is really cool. It makes it a lot of fun. It makes it fun to cruise around on really smooth, beautiful streets like this. It makes hills a lot easier to approach and climb. And one thing I really love about it is that it uses a torque sensor. It's a double-sided torque sensor at the bottom bracket versus a cadence sensor. And so a lot of other, you know, more affordable electric bikes, they'll use cadence sensors in combination with a hub motor. And this is a 250 watt Bafang planetary geared hub motor, but it's actually rated closer to like 450 nominal up to 500, 550 peak, okay? And, and like they say, 45 Newton meters of torque, that's pretty good for such a small, compact, lightweight hub motor. I was told that that weighs about 6.6 .6 pounds. I weighed the battery at about 4.7 and the entire frame as is without any extra, you know, bottles or racks or anything is about 40.6 pounds. That's fantastic. And the price point is also really impressive. This thing is $22.99 USD, $24.99 Canadian. Okay, so I started out talking about the name and saying, oh, chameleon, that's kind of cool, but it's not spelled like the chameleon lizard. It's actually the name of a politician. Um, I think a long passed away politician uh, in a kind of Montreal area. And I was talking to the founder of this company, Gary, and he's like, yeah, we named it after this road that goes up um, this volcanic mountain, Montreal, Mont Royal. That's what the city is named after. I guess this Royal Mountain, that's actually a volcano. And every year they have this race up this road and, you know, for cyclists. And I did the research and I was like, I think it's a politician's name. And he was like, oh yeah, you know, we named it after the road. And in fact, a lot of their, their new e-bikes are named after like good rides in the Montreal area. So really cool company has a long history of creating e-bikes. I've reviewed tons of them over the years and now they're becoming just fancier, right? With that internally mounted battery. This is a really cool display. It's color, it's got kind of like haptic feedback. It sort of buzzes. You probably can't hear anything, but I feel a little bit of a buzz, which is really nice if you're, you know, focused on the road and kind of leaned over and maybe you're not getting a perfect angle on this. It does swivel a little bit to reduce glare. The display is, it's a decent size, but one of the trade-offs here with the, the drop bars is always like accessing the display. Okay, so your hands might be way over here, getting ready to brake, shifting gears with those paddle shifters, and you gotta take them off and kind of move over here to interact with the display. We got a power button on the bottom, a mode button over there. It offers a lot of great readouts and they have a smartphone app, which I'm gonna go into a little bit later, but I do wanna point out that, you know, that the hand position is a bit of a compromise um, and it's not just this electric road bike. One thing that I don't love about it is that every time you power cycle the bike, it starts out at zero. So you have to start from the very bottom again and go like plus, 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 all the way up to five. I am really thankful that it doesn't have nine levels of assist by default, which is something I've seen on some of the other iGo bikes. You know, there's a lot to consider when you're putting a bike together and everyone has a different preference. There are some pretty good settings in that display as well. So coming back to the bike, uh, we have standard 100 millimeter hub spacing up front with a nine millimeter axle quick release skewer so you can service this tire pretty easily. But it, it is 
you know, silk, silk shield. So that's like puncture protection. And you can see 75 maximum PSI. So it's like 50 to 75, something like this. Definitely check that before you ride. I usually squeeze the tires and just start to get a feel for what full is because it's easy to get sort of a, a snake bite on these high pressure, you know, really narrow tires. They're just not as tall. And if you come into contact with like a, a sharp edge of a curb or something like that, it can just compress the tire and pop the tube inside and at least you have quick release on the front not so in the rear you you just got these these nuts basically and um kind of a slotted axle and then this nice silver a little bit sturdier dropout point over here so you can see this thicker like 12 millimeter threaded axle so it just takes more tools and you know you gotta kind of mess with the derailleur and maybe unplug the motor here at that quick disconnect point well, I've moved us to a shadier spot because I'm going to look at the display and I was getting a little bit of glare before. So now we can really see that drivetrain. This is an 18 speed. So we've got nine sprockets in the rear, 11 to 32 tooth, Shimano Sora. That's like one step up in the, the road group component um, set right there. Shimano Sora at the front as, as well. I was looking at this thinking like, oh, compact double. So it's got two chain rings instead of three. And with the electric assist, it is geared pretty well to hit and maintain that 32 kilometers per hour, 20 miles per hour. But there's actually like an off-road mode where you can unlock it and go closer to that like 45 kilometer per hour, 28 mile per hour. So this is like a speed pedelec, which is awesome. It does not have a throttle, but it also has this like torque sensor combination. So to me, I think they chose really well when they designed this bike, when they chose the sensors and the motor and everything. You got to balance weight and power consumption and battery placement and then how it engages with you. Remember I was talking about torque sensor versus cadence. Cadence, you just sort of, you pedal a little bit and as long as you're moving, the motor kicks on. It's sort of on or off. Whereas this is much more dynamic. You can be in the highest level of assist pushing very gently and the motor is not going to it's not gonna kick in too hard. But then right, right when you need the power, maybe you start climbing a hill, you put a little bit more effort into those, those cranks and pedals and, and you're gonna get that boost right away, right when you want it. So it really feels more natural. This is a, a definitely more sporty bike and you can see that from just the body position a little bit more forward with the drop bars and everything. So, okay, so I, I had a couple more things to say about the tires as well. So Maxxis Overdrive XL 700 by 32 C. I think this works up to 42 C. So even wider, you can put, turn this into a gravel grinder. See how there's extra space both at the front and rear. That's kind of nice. So that's another thing that makes this versatile in addition to all the bosses and stuff we talked about before. We have the puncture protection. We also have reflective sidewall stripes, which is great when it does get a little bit darker. You want to be visible. This bike does not come with integrated lights like some of the other Igo models, including the Aspire Vendome, which is a flat bar road bike. It's actually a little bit cheaper and that one has fenders and a rack included. But the electronics are done pretty well. You can see this is metal. It's a threaded. It's got a little washer right there, rubber washer. So they're using nicer hardware that's going to last for a while. And for me, that's part of why I think the Chameleon is was one of the best, like affordably priced road electric bikes. And this is a category that's fairly new in the space. I've seen some other bikes where they just sort of bolt on a, a battery pack and that's okay, but this really looks nice. And they've got plenty of room here for two bottle cage bosses and two frame sizes. So I am on the large, it's the 21 inch frame, uh, 54, but they also have like a 19 inch frame, which would be perfect if you're someone who a little bit more petite because this does only come in the high step frame style. Again, sportier, you, you need to kind of stand over that. You've got the saddle up extra high to get that full leg extension because you're, you're actively pedaling. This is not as casual as a lot of the other electric bikes I cover. 30.4 millimeters on that seat post, just standard aluminum alloy. You could swap that out with a suspension seat post, which would be nice for comfort. I talked about the potential for wider, higher volume tires, and this is aluminum alloy. Same with the frame. Okay, so we don't have like a carbon fiber fork that's gonna absorb shock. This is not the specialized Turbo Creo SL with like suspension, you know, headset shock thing. Okay, that that was really cool. I reviewed that recently, but th those bikes are, you know, five, ten thousand dollars depending on what you get. Carbon fiber, super, super nice. For a more budget price bike, I think this is just, it's one of the best and I've actually really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna talk about cranks here. These are 170 millimeter, 
forged aluminum alloy. This is square tapered spindle, so it's it's not super fancy. Um, just kind of standard that way. Plastic VP pedals, but extra wide, nice nubs, very approachable. This bike is like ready to go. A lot of times for road bikes, you're gonna end up with some you know clip-in shoes and stuff that make it a little bit nicer. Other areas that they did compromise a bit are the brakes. So they're using TRP. They look pretty nice. TRP is like the upgraded version of Tektro. It's like their fancier line of brakes, but these are mechanical. You can see the, the wire right there versus hydraulic. And over time, they, they sort of set in a little bit and you might have to adjust the tension. You can get some water and, and debris sort of, especially in the rear, see how it's angled down like this so water can land on that wire kind of go into the tube or dust and it just kind of gets gummed up a little bit and that distance is a little bit farther for the rear brake and it ends up requiring a little bit more hand effort and you're already in this sort of like you know kind of compromised position if you're in the hoods because you're having to see how my hands at an angle versus down here I'm getting really good pull so for me a lot of times I am braking when my hands up in the hood so that is that's definitely a trade-off. No hydraulic brakes, but they are disc brakes, 160 millimeter rotors. That's pretty good. I, I like that, definitely compared to like the rim brakes. It's, it's sort of come into fashion over the past maybe five years or something. I see more and more bikes that are kind of this like urban hybrid road bike that do a lot of things. Disc brakes elevate the braking surface off of the road which coming back to gravel grinders, if you swap out those tires or something, that's not gonna get as dusty as the rim and it's just gonna brake a little bit easier. Disc brakes were originally created for like mountain bikes and stuff, right? Cause it keeps the braking surface up high. Um, and again, 160 millimeter, it's decent. The wheel size again, these are like 28. Uh, that's the 700 by 32 and uh, might just flip the bike around now. I feel like we've touched on a lot of things. Velo saddle, but I go branded. That's kind of cool. I mean, they spent some extra money. I think this is FSA foam grip tape. You know, there's the hoods that we were talking about before. Shifting is done like this goes to a higher gear. And then if you move the entire thing that goes to a lower gear, that's for the rear derailleur. And then it's kind of the, the opposite over here on this side. Get another shot of those brakes. Oh, and then the spokes, look at these. So these are 12 gauge in the rear, 36 whole rims, 13 gauge up front. So a little bit lighter on the spokes up front, not quite as thick, but the rims have these reinforcement eyelets. See that little silver circle going into the rim? That makes them just even sturdier. It's not gonna crack the rim quite as, as easily as it might otherwise. Another shot of that bottom bracket. You can see the, what is this? Auto. RQ torque sensor, and I'm gonna take the battery off real quick here. Just give you a quick demonstration of that. So it just comes off very easily, 4.7 pounds, like I was saying, lightweight. It's got a little, I think RGB, so red, green, blue indicator to tell you how full it is. So blue is like full. And then there's the charging port under this rubber cap right here. You can charge the bike on or off the frame. And there is the charger. It only weighs one pound, super lightweight, two amp charger. It might take three and a half, four hours to fill this from completely empty, but this is nice. There isn't like a fan or anything. It's not gonna be loud. It feels very durable and high quality. Being able to take the battery off is really nice for those hot and cold days. Uh, it's just gonna help the cells last a little bit longer. They are using LG, those lithium ion cells, 18650, 3200 milliamp cells, 36 volts, 10.5 amp hour. So it's not the highest capacity battery. And again, 36 volts, it's like meh, but their custom controller, which is down here, and that's also where like the Bluetooth connection is, it's sending higher wattage to that motor. They say up to 70 is what the controller is rated for. It's definitely not sending that much. It might be in the high 20s or mid 20s, but that's that's how you get the 250 watt rated motor up performing at more of a 400, 450 nominal. And it, it is very zippy, but it does produce a little bit of noise. That's one of my complaints. Aside from, you know, the comfort, it's an all aluminum frame, you know, there's a little bit of a wee when you're in that higher top speed. So on that battery, the extreme heat is gonna degrade the cells over time, and then the extreme cold is gonna stunt them temporarily for the ride. So if, if it's early morning, you've been storing the bike in your garage and you hop on and it's full, it's been charging, you're gonna get like half the range. And I estimate on this bike, something like 35 to 55 miles per charge. It really depends on the level of assist you use, but because it's a torque sensor, it requires you to engage a little bit more. So even though the battery is, it's a little bit on the small side, this is not super high capacity, but coming back to weight, 40.6 pounds 
that's great. And then you take off, you know, almost five pounds on the battery, that's gonna make the bike a lot easier to lift and load and maybe carry upstairs. So for me, this would be a great bike for someone who lives kind of downtown and it's like, oh, I gotta carry this up the stairs to my condo or something like that. I would just, you know, consider the suspension seat post. Um, and you know, no, look at this, we got four 10 millimeter spacers and then a tapered 20 millimeter at the bottom. So this is fairly, this is fairly high. The stem is more upright. It's, it's a fairly comfortable bike. It's not super, super aggressive. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and boot this thing up. We got the power button right down there. You do have to hold it for a couple seconds. At first I didn't know that I kept pressing it. I'm like, is this thing out of batteries? But no, you just gotta hold it for a couple seconds. So here we go, we got watts. We've got a number readout as well as like a little graph. It kind of looks like this, but it's it's dynamic. Depends, you know, if you're riding and shows you how hard the, the motor is working. We've got a headlight indicator, which is not useful on this bike. It doesn't have integrated lights. If you hold the plus button, see it, the lights would turn on, but again, there's nothing wired in. Uh, in the middle, we've got current speed it's set into kilometers per hour right now but we can change that to miles per hour we've got trip down here trip distance and if we press the m button at the bottom of the display it cycles to ride time odometer average speed max speed and then back to to trip over on the right we have a little infographic showing our battery capacity 10 bars that's great it's it's a little bit more um, I think intuitive to just glance down and say, oh, I'm in the yellow, I'm in the red, and you, you wanna get home before you run all the way out. That's kind of hard on the cells too. And then we have a battery percentage. So this is very good information. It's not fancy enough to give you like a range estimate or something like we see on some of the mid drives and again, fancier products, but that's still really good. It's, it's a little bit more refined than just like five bars and no percentage. There's the assist level. And remember I said it resets every time you turn the bike off. So we're in level zero right now and we've got five levels and so you have to go over here and click 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 to get the power you know it'd be kind of cool if it remembered or if you could click down once and have it loop but that is not the case you have to go one two three four five and then there's also this foot icon there which means walk mode i'm going to see if it works in assist level zero so we hold minus there there we go there we go so it does work in zero as well as the other levels of assist walk mode's cool if you're you know the, the bike still weighs something that's just going to help you carry it maybe up a hill without having to push the bike walks itself which is pretty nice and then we've got a little error like notification service icon down there in the left as well if there's a problem with the bike if we hold plus and minus we should be able to get into the display panel actually i think if you hold if we hold mode gets into the display panel so you can see we change from you know metric to imperial brightness on the background which is really handy because sometimes you're riding at night and the display could be sort of bright automatic off battery voltage leave that at 36 for this bike battery indicator percentage so we can adjust that if we want and then there's even more i think we just click the m password so i don't i don't know the password you can't adjust the the sort of off-road high speed mode using the display you have to use the smartphone app so i'm going to show you that next okay so the app is called igo electric um i searched for like igo electric bikes and did not find the app that way so you have to search like igo electric i'm turning on bluetooth and i turned up my brightness as much as i could miles per hour we got a speedometer right there they said they're doing updates for this like every couple weeks so we might lose the speedometer at some point you can imagine mounting this on your handlebar and using it as a big display but i, I think this is more designed to like update the bike briefly and then you know put it back in your pack it's not something you would really engage with too much while you're riding um i'm trying to be really close to the bike because it felt like the bluetooth was sort of limited in range so you click this little menu icon at the top left and yeah, settings, it's not uh, its not even seeing the bike right now. Those are grayed out. So what I'm gonna have to do is close the app and launch it again. Okay, there we go. Let's do the, oh, there we go. Cool, cool. So see, it says it's in standard mode right here and it gives the battery readout. So now we are connected to the bike and the Bluetooth module is down there. If you were just setting it up, you'd go here to Bluetooth connections and then you'd, you'd find the bike. See how it says 24% right there? That's not the battery on the bike. It's talking about the signal of Bluetooth. It's 24%. So there we go. I clicked it. We're connected. And then let's see, load alternative settings, getting device information. E-bike is up to date. Great. There's a simulation that shows you what it would look like if we were riding. So see the, the speed is going dynamically. And then down here, we've got power output. You can see a little graph and then also a number. So this is kind of what it would look like if you were actually 
riding. And then settings is pretty cool, so we can choose what ride mode. Economy is gonna get you better range and it starts a little slower. Standard or sport mode, super sporty. So it says, keep the e-bike at a complete stop. Let's retry it, retry it. We're definitely at a complete stop. I think we're, we're just having some, some issues here with the connection. Uh, but what I wanted to communicate is that there are these three default levels, and then you can actually go in here and set your own level. You can change the acceleration profile and then save. And when you do that, then you get four different uh, settings for the bike. So it's a pretty cool app. It's fairly intuitive, big fonts, you know, looks fairly nice. And then of course, over here on the right, we can enable off-road mode. And we got this disclaimer so that you know, if you're in a place where that's not allowed, it's up to you, you know, where to use it, how to use it. So I'm gonna decline this and keep it in standard mode for the rest of this review. And I can go ahead and just close the app. We're done with it. The bike's all synced up and it's, it's adjusted based on those settings that I just chose. Okay, so we're starting out at Crestwood Park. Really happy day out. Assist level five, we got a little hill in front of us. So I'm gonna start by riding down that. Now this is a planetary geared hub motor, so you can hear it. There's a little bit of a zip. Uh, I was told that this is a sine wave controller, which tends to be a little bit quieter and smoother, but the motor maybe just being kind of like amped up a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit more to it when we're, especially in assist level five. Oh boy. Pretty easy to start getting carried away and I'm making sure that I have enough room to stop here and then turn around and do a little hill climb. Yeah, no problem. We're climbing this hill. The bike's tracking really nicely and I'm not having to stand up or really overexert myself here. Pretty quickly get up to that 32 kilometers per hour, 20 miles per hour and then the motor fades out depending on how hard you're pushing because it is a torque sensor it might just kind of cut out or it might fade out smoothly so i'm going to shift gears here there we go there we go we are up to like 33 kilometers per hour and i could definitely hear like and then it just cut out and unfortunately right before 20 miles per hour that's when the motor's like kind of the most annoying so for me that's one of the the trade-offs with this bike is just that it feels like you're going to be hearing that noise a lot if you're in assist level five i'll do it one more time there we go and when you're coasting down a hill no problem but if you're kind of on the flats or it's windy, I feel like you're gonna be hearing that a lot. I'm gonna change the assist level now. Assist level two, see what that sounds like. To me, it seems about the same. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. If you're trying to be stealthy and blend in, um, with your friends on non-electric road bikes, they might notice a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but it isn't, it isn't super silent. Try to give you a little third person view on this bike. Fairly balanced front to rear. This is the size large. I'm about 5'9", 135 pounds for reference. really got some get up and go. Okay guys, from here you can see the drivetrain. We've got the 32 tooth chain ring up front, that's the smaller one, and then a 48 tooth larger. With a little plastic guard here that's gonna protect your pants a little bit and maybe keep the, the chain from falling off. But we also have this like guide. So because we have a front derailleur, which is fairly uncommon on electric bikes, shouldn't have any problem with that. And it's a road bike, you're probably not going off road too much. In the rear, same thing, Shimano Sora derailleur, nine speeds, 11 to 32. It's pretty good. We do have a rust resistant uh, KMC chain, which is kind of nice to see. And because it's a hub motor, 
the the drivetrain's independent, so shifting and stuff, you don't have to worry about mashing gears the same way you might with a mid-drive. I'm gonna pedal along, hopefully give you a chance to hear this uh, cycling on and off. There's a, sometimes a little bit of a delay, but with a torque sensor, and I, I mean in terms of cutting out, starting, it's, it's right there with you, but occasionally it just kind of, it lasts a little bit longer, even when I'm not applying a lot of pressure. Also, I didn't see a slap guard on the right chainstay, which would have been nice. You could just use a clear piece of tape, like box tape, if you want to. Uh, otherwise, really beautiful aesthetic on this, really purpose-built electric bike. Whew. Of course, I'm in assist level five, because it seems like the sound was similar in all of the different levels of assist, and it really it comes back to how hard you apply pressure on the cranks, because it is a torque sensor. brakes are working great. Hopefully you could hear a little bit of the delay that I was talking about with the motor, how it just kind of, it takes a minute to, to quiet down and to stop uh, giving you assist. There are no motor inhibitors on the brake levers on this bike either, so it's really just listening to that torque sensor signal. Now just for fun, I'm gonna try the first level of assist and see, see how that sounds. Yeah, I still hear it a little bit, still a little bit of a delay to cut out. It's just not giving me nearly as much power when I pedal. Really great area to ride. It's handling the bumpy stuff pretty well, even with these narrow tires. Cool. Guys, I think that's it. That's the iGo Electric Aspire Chameleon for the full written review on this, including all the specs. I measure them by hand and a cool comparison tool so you can just, you know, see what your money gets you looking at some of the other options. Check out electricbikereview.com. Also got a couple guides that talk about my favorite bikes for each category. Um, again, I've covered iGo a lot in the past. I feel like they've done a, a pretty good job and it's really ni nice to see them going to these purpose-built designs versus just sort of a bolt-on battery pack. And you know, two frame sizes at this price uh, with a torque sensor is, is pretty awesome. I'd love to hear what you think. Get your feedback in the comments. Love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you on the next one.